Glory be to Jesus. Uh, He's the same yesterday, even today, uh, and forevermore. Um, We're going to sing again from CGS number 23. CGS 23. We will take the first and the last verse. The God who rescued Daniel from the lion's den and from the fiery furnace saved the three young men who speaks and constellations will his voice obey is the God to whom we pray. Amen. And he's just the same today.
I feel we should sing that chorus once more. Just the same today, just the same. going to sing two choruses um this is the day Amen. that the lord has made Amen. it's the day of your salvation Amen. it's the day of the miracle we have been waiting on god for uh, may we sing this with faith believing uh, and god will surely bless us this morning this is the day gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen. Just the quote, please. I will enter his gates in thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will sing this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for you. somebody just feels uh, I, I don't feel this joy yet uh, but today is that day Amen. our God is here to bless us and we're gonna sing again uh, a short chorus uh, that says God will make a way
Our song before prayer will be CGS, will be from CGS 672. 672. We're going to sing the first and the second verse who are seated. Um, and then for those of us who can stand, we'll rise up to sing the fourth verse and remain standing. Uh, and after that, we'll be led in prayer. So we'll sing the first and the second who are seated um, and fourth and the fourth on our feet. Six seven two. We look to God in prayer, but the Afia will lead us. O oh Lord of God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, our God, God who has been, the God who is, the God who shall be forevermore. Lord and our creator, our maker, we stand before you, O oh Lord, really humbled. We are not worthy of your love and care, your mercies, the binding power, O oh Lord, we have expressed on our behalf. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being so merciful, so kind, so generous, so faithful and true. Thank you for the great love of giving your only begotten Son to die for us, to open this way to eternal life. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your word. You will send your word, and your word heal them in those days. And you've been sending your word to heal us of our spiritual malady. We thank you for your Holy Spirit been guiding, guiding us, O oh Lord, showing us the way. Yes. You are the truth. You are the way. Amen. And you are the life. Amen. Lord, reveal yourself today. Amen. Show us the way, O oh Lord. Amen. Once again, through your word, you will speak to us through your servants. 
Lord, give us humble hearts, hearts that will take in your word, that we will be hearers, not only hearers, but doers of your word, so that we may profit from it. Lord, have your own way. You are the porter. We are the clay. Mold us, O God. Make us, O God. Shepherd us to feed your own purpose for our lives here. Lord, there are those who are sick in body. We pray that you will heal all the sick. Those who are able to be here and those who are not here, Lord, visit them. Have your way, O Lord, in all our affairs, both physical and spiritual, that we might find grace in this life. Oh, that you will give us such a heart, heart that will help us to live, and that will be well with us and with our children forever. Have their own way, O Lord. Make us your people indeed, obedient children, children that are called by your name. You call the children of God, make us truly children of God. Lord, at the end of this service, we will come to pray. Meet us on the altars of prayer. Answer all our prayers, O God. Save souls this morning. Sanctify, O Lord. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Revive us again. Thank you, O Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
chapter 15, reading from verse 1 through 8 and 16. John chapter 15, reading from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, and that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me he can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. 16. And last. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, ye may give it you.
Let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we read verses 16 through to 20. Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> it says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. I guess this is very familiar scripture to a lot of us who probably have been around church, you are acquainted to Christianity over the years. It's, you know, this, the phrase, by their fruits you shall know them, is a phrase that's commonly used. I mean, even when I was, wasn't saved and I was still in the Muslim faith, it's, that's one of the bits of, you know, scriptures that we know because we often hear it, they say, by their fruits you shall know them. We will try and look into the context around this scripture and around and, and try and establish really what God wants from us in terms of bearing fruit. I mean, understanding the context will enable us to see what part we really need to play in terms of um, that fruit. It said, by their fruit, ye shall know them. I, I guess, you know, I, I, I kind of brought in a branch. If you, I mean, because of the time in which you're in, a lot of um, the branches that bear fruit, I mean, because it's this, it's not this season where we've got an apple tree in our garden, but for some reason they've all gone um, because it's not the season. But I suppose we can all relate to branches, can't we? When we talk about different branches and normally out of that branch, you may get leaves and the fruit stems out of it, something like that. If it's fruit stems out here. But the important thing here is they're all connected. The branch is connected to maybe sometimes another branch. And then you get the eventual one connecting to the main trunk, you know, the trunk of the tree, which goes down. And that trunk, oftentimes, the Bible might call that, maybe in the case of a vine tree, that's the vine. That trunk is important, but it's saying a lot happens from that trunk. Because without that connection with all that sort of stuff, the branch really is useless. It wouldn't actually perform anything. Because again, we know plants are living things, aren't they? So we're talking about something that's living. And when we relate to Christianity, we're talking about a living soul. We're talking about someone who has been living. And maybe because we're looking at connection and disconnection. Maybe a very simple example of connection is Say, for example, we all, we've got some of us got vacuum hoovers isn't it, in the home where it's very much reliant on it plugged into the socket, to the source. And as you kind of keep hoovering, you're enjoying 
whatever the strength of that hoover, whatever the makeup of it is, or however good it is, you're enjoying it. But sometimes, you know, the, the wire or the, it's slightly stretched, and then you suddenly find that everything goes down and then no activity, that shows that there's disconnection there. No matter how much you talk about that hoover, the moment that source is missing, that power source is missing, the hoover is as good as nothing. So that's something that we kind of understand. And this will enable us to understand where Jesus Christ was coming from. Something about Jesus Christ is he used so many illustrations, especially in those days when they were predominantly farmers. So he used a lot of the examples that they can relate to to try and bring out some spiritual truths, which at least they would leave, um, um, they wouldn't leave without understanding exactly what um, he was trying to tell them. Now, in that um, scripture we read, he started saying, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Saying grapes and thorns. You don't get, you know, when you're expecting grapes, you don't get thorns, do you? They don't belong to the same kind of this. They just, it's a bit of a misnomer. He said he doesn't of figs or thistles. Thistles are kind of weedy plants. You don't get that. If you plant figs, you will get figs. You don't get thistles. So that's the kind of thing he was saying. He said, he said even so, every good tree bring it forth good fruit. I think it's, it's important. What he's saying there is as long as that tree is good, it will bring forth good fruit. And if, if that tree is corrupt, it will bring forth what, evil fruit. But for the purpose of, because this is a lesson or this is um, a scripture that can be used in different ways, but for the purpose of this scripture, we're focusing on a good tree. And that tree, that the vine, isn't it? The vine is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the one that we, you know, the branches get nutrients from. You get the nutrients from that. Without that vine, just, I am the vine. Amen. That's the vine there. Without it, we can't get any kind of um, nutrients at all. So and that, in the case of a vine tree, it bears grapes. So if we go to chapter 15, where we actually use for our, our Bible reading, verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. What he's saying here is that, imagine that tree, it's a good tree, and in that good tree, the vine, or that trunk itself, is Jesus Christ. Amen. The father, the husband man, usually is the person that takes care of the farm itself. The farmer, maybe in some cases, all the cultivating, the tilling, the dressing, the pruning, everything takes place, you know, the, is, the, is the role of the husband man that does that. And he's saying, God is saying, in this, in this, in, in this, um, in the scripture, in the scripture, the husband man itself is God, the Father, and the branches are supposed to be we children of God. So, children of God, we can see that there's a connection there. The farmer is the one doing all that. He's the one that sent Jesus Christ down, isn't it? When he sent him down, he through Jesus Christ we get life, life abundantly. And that's the vine now, and we've got the branches stemming out of that vine to be able to get nutrients from it. So we can see that, that Jesus Christ is our true vine. And the, in the case of the branches here, what we will understand is those branches, in a nutshell, are professors of Christianity. Some of them may be true Christians, some of them may not. And it's the fruit that comes out that actually determines who is who. In terms of, but for the purpose of this, we say it's the branch that we are actually focused on. Verse 2 says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Can we see that now? Children of God, you know, so for some reason, by God's grace, we are saved. Before you can actually be attached to that vine, salvation is the root. Amen. Salvation is the root. When one is saved, you become a part of Jesus Christ and you attach to that vine because there's living you become a living you know of course we are living soul but then your spirit is born again and by that attachment we can get nutrients from that and as those nutrients flow through the branches something happens you begin to find out that fruits begin to come out of it that's how you get the grapes that's why when the Bible says buy their fruit so it's not so much we are not the ones producing fruit our fruit is dependent on that connection we have to the vine. And that is important for us to know. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruits. 
So we can see that the purpose of the branches, the purpose of it is to bear fruit. If it doesn't bear fruit, as far as that farmer is concerned, it's useless. That's why farmers, you know, they spend a lot of time doing walking on the tree. There's a lot of pruning, there's a lot of cutting, there's a lot of um, discarding, there's a lot of actually, the bit that's actually cooperating, there's a lot of actually working to make sure those bits nurture, and that's what the cultivation actually happens. And the, the context of this John chapter 15, actually from John chapter 13 to chapter 17, were the kind of last sermons that just Christ, before he went to get Gethsemane, those were the times... These were the last kind of teachings he was giving his disciples. They were very, very deep. If you've got time to look into John chapter 13 all the way to 17, it contains some very, very deep teachings. And when he got to chapter 15, 15 actually was when after um, Judas, you know, the betray, not the betrayer, when he left, that's when he was he left the upper room and was with the remaining 11 and he began to home in on some deeper teachings. That's when this chapter 15 came about. So we're saying, by God's grace, these were the branches. And it was kind of explaining to them that really you are a branch to bear fruit. The primary purpose of us as children of God is to bear fruit. And not just bear fruit, but to bear much fruit. There is no way, but one thing we need to understand is we can't bear any of this on our own. It's just as the vacuum cleaner was unable to operate effectively without that source, the same way a child of God cannot bear fruit without the attachment to the vine. Very, very important. So let's not think, you know, because sometimes someone may not be possessing the spiritual fruit. That's true. But that person cannot of themselves possess fruit. When it comes to spiritual fruit, it's not possible. If you're personally, fo- if one is person focused, the fruit will be a, will be the works of the flesh. That's why what we're saying is the works of the flesh versus spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit comes through the attachment to the good tree. Works of the flesh are dead works. They are dead works, and maybe one can liken that to even the evil tree or whatever. But there's no life. In those kind of production of fruits. So that's why we're homing on and focusing on um, this. And in verse 3, it says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Again, as I said, it was addressing his disciples, his apostles. He was addressing them. We know that they were clean. What it means is through the word, it's through God's word that we are saved, aren't we? By God's we hear that word. Said by faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And as we respond to that word, we confess our sins, God saves our souls. And if, as we heard this morning during Sunday school, if we actually progress and we say, God, really clean my heart. We want him to actually remove that um, sinful nature from us so that holiness can be perfected in our lives. We become sanctified and we can say that we become clean. You know, clean can be used for salvation, it can be used, but normally the word cleanse, cleanse and oftentimes is used for cleaning um, us from that inbred sin. So he was referring to, we are clean, so he's referring to children of God who are clean, who by God's grace are washed from their lives of sin. Now, if we link this to Galatians chapter 5, it's saying now that we are clean, it says so, the, 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 the context is he was addressing children of God. Forget about the sinner now. We pray that every sinner, everyone who is not saved, will actually be attracted to want to be attached to that vine. The moment you become born again, the moment your spirit man becomes born again, that you pray away through to salvation, what happens is the spirit of God becomes alive inside you and automatically you, are, you become a branch. That branch is then attached to the vine. And that vine now, that branch is expected now to bear fruit. And without receiving nutrients, without receiving that growth, the farmer, God is there doing his work all the time, working through, cultivating our hearts, doing all sorts of things, enabling us to come to services like this, enabling us to attend, maybe be Bible study, maybe do a family altar. It's God. That's part of the cultivation. He's cultivating because the end product, the outcome that God is aiming at is fruit. That's what we need to bear in mind. The whole outcome, the whole essence 
of us coming to church, the whole essence of us, it's good that we say, okay, we come for the different steps. That's true. It's important. It's similar to someone who is in school, who is in uni. They pay very, very particular attention or, or um, yeah, attention to attendance. I know in my boys' school, if attendance is not very high, they're in trouble. They need to, apart from hitting some stats or whatever, it's important because the more you actually expose yourself to the lessons in class, the easier it is for you, isn't it, in comprehending and being able to actually succeed in the end. So everything we do, it's not at an end in itself. Coming to church or coming to church every Sunday, coming to this thing, in itself is a, is a standalone. Yes, we may tick all those boxes, but if it's not linked to bearing fruit, it doesn't have any meaning. It's good. We still encourage it, but may God help us to link it to the outcome God is expecting of all of us. So in, in, in Galatians 5.22, 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against there is no law. Imagine that. These are the good things we all want. Even in the world, those who are non-Christians or those who belong to other faith, they want things like this. They, want, they talk about meekness, do they talk about, you know, we, we, some people, some organizations have it as their values. They have all these great things there in there but the major difference is without Christ we can't do nothing without Christ we will be unable to bear this fruit of the spirit that's why he mentioned all that there against such there is no law it is not when we talk about love for example we all want to love isn't it? we all preach about love even outside church we talk about loving one another but the Bible said this is not a legal requirement. It's not like, you know, you've got to love. Yeah, that's true. We do that. There's nothing wrong in that. But divine love comes from God. It comes from the attachment to the vine. Without that, you're not getting the nutrients that enables us to truly love the way God loves. That is the point he was making there that it is something that is a product of the attachment to the vine. The attachment to Jesus Christ, who is the vine. So if we go to verse 4 now, it says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Can we see that now? He said it cannot bear fruit of itself. So please, let's not try and do it by our own self. You can't be long-suffering of your own self. I can't be. None of us can be. None of us can bear the fruit of the Spirit by our own selves. It all starts when we are saved. That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ is what? becomes a new creature because even people know that all things are passed away someone who used to be very angry very very intolerant very very you know whatever all sorts of this thing begin to emanate you know all of a sudden without going to maybe you will expect that to happen perhaps maybe a whole dose of training perhaps maybe you need to spend about a month of uh, going through training and exercise and all sorts before you begin to expect those things to come out but instantaneously at the point of salvation everybody knows that this life has changed because you are getting nutrients from somewhere and that's where you have a measure of the fruits of the spirit in our lives that's what the bible is saying here it said as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me so unless we abide in christ we cannot bear the fruit of the spirit i am the vine Ye are the branches. Can we see that now? We've got that big trunk. That's the vine. We are the branches. Say, so ye are the branches. And he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Can we see that now? The, the, that's all he's expecting. The moment you are attached. He said, I am thine, O Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. You are kind of surrendering. Say, so that's all you need to do. The moment we are touched, they said, look, I'll do the rest. Said, he said, the promise is you will bring forth much fruit. It's a promise. We can't do it by ourselves. It's a the promise is such a person will bring forth much fruit. Um, you know, trees. Um, um, in, in verse 8, actually, he said, Herein is my Father glorified, 
that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Can we see this? Who gets the glory? It's God. It's not we humans. He said the, the moment we begin to bear that much fruit, someone sees that something has happened in this person's life. There is some external thing that's working. There, this is not this, my son or the person I know. There is some extraordinary power, which is the Holy Spirit, working in this person's life and is bringing forth that fruit. That's why God gets the glory. That's why in Matthew 5, 16, when it says, Matthew 5, it said, Let your light so shine before men. The light of the gospel, the light we received, that by virtue of that attachment to the vine, that when we remain attached to that vine, he said, let it so shine. He said that they may see your good works. So when they see our good works, they wouldn't glorify you. They're not going to say, yeah, well done. I mean, I'm not saying they can't say well done, but they see something supernatural behind it. That's why they glorify our Father, which is in heaven. The glory goes to God. Because you only got it through the attachment to the vine. So we can see that. So we can see the importance of us um, to do that. So trees do not bear fruit for themselves. The tree that, you know, trees when they are planted, the tree, nothing. It, all is there is just to bear fruit. The branches, we are not bearing it for ourselves. We are bearing it for the farmer, which is God. They said we are God's workmanship. Created, you know, he's on his own image. He, we are a, a project of God. He is the one, he, the moment we get in, he wants to show the world of what he intended at the beginning. The very intention before our first parents, Adam and Eve, failed, we are actually examples of it. We are the ones who say that, look, I will make everyone feel that less. My glory will still shine through mortals, mere mortals, because they will live lives that will bear this fruit of the Spirit. And it's through the attachment to the vine. In Matthew 5.13, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? He said, if that salt, what it's saying is that when we're bearing fruit, it's like we're salting. But when it's lost its savor, it can easily be likened to evil fruit. The moment it is there, well, it's, there's something that's happened to that attachment which um, we have to God. So good fruits bring glory to God. And good fruit is what makes up for Christian character. When we talk about character, the fruits of the Spirit actually, that's the thing that makes up for character. There's character, there's reputation. Reputation oftentimes may be person-focused, but character, when it comes to Christian character, is something that God produces in us. But we can, we can fight for a good reputation, like Saul did. You know, when we started our lesson this morning, Saul wanted a reputation among the people. And through that reputation, he wanted to be good, so everyone says that he's a good person, a nice person. But that doesn't give you character. When it comes to God, it's completely different things. The case of Paul and Silas, we are reading, we are enjoying, we are being blessed by their lives when they were, you know, put in prison. But what he produced was character. It didn't produce, what reputation did they have? No reputation. Did they have any reputation among the people out there? No. Because that wasn't what people could reckon with. So it has nothing to do with reputation. When we look at the case of Jesus Christ too, the Bible said he had no reputation. There was no reputation. What the people wanted was, even when he was to go, you know, during the uh, triumphant entry, they felt at least he's not trying to get a bit of glory. That's nice. That's what we want. They wanted something as the world relates to but it was the bit that attracted people was when he began the, the, the power of God was working in his life. When he was healing the sick, when he was transforming lives, the great teaching he was given gave him character. It didn't give him any reputation. If he had reputation, he wouldn't have died for our sins. He wouldn't have gone to the cross. He wouldn't have allowed himself to be beaten so mercilessly. He wouldn't have allowed himself to be treated like, you know, like, 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 a, like a hardened criminal. He wouldn't have, if he wanted reputation. So character is something that's produced by God. And may God help us to link into that and to be able to get character from God himself. And, and circumstances prove So abiding is what is more important. We want to abide. And how do we abide? How do we maintain it? Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself. Can we see it again? Not of yourself. It's not us. We just responded 
to the, you know, the, the yearning of the spirit. We went down there in deep tears, in, you know, crying out, and then he just took over. God just took over. He said, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. No true Christian can boast. We don't. We're not entitled. What are we entitled to? What do we have that isn't given to us? If you're living a godly life, if your God is able to be patient, loving to love people, if you're boasting about it, that means you are the one responsible. It's not God. If it's God, no boasting. All you did was, you said, God, you know, thou art the pot, I am the clay. Make me and mold me. And as he's making and molding us, he is then using us to his own glory. Amen. It's to his own glory. And that's what we want. That's why it's important, as the, the Bible says in that term, verse um, Verse 8, verse 8 says, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Can we see this? If salvation is of works, we can justify the judgment in, when we judge one another. When we condemn one we can justify it. But if you feel it's not of your own works, then you have no, so, well, you are what you are, I am what I am by God's grace. Yeah. So if someone is not there yet, let's pray for them. Yeah. And as we pray for them, God is able to lift them up. Because we can't be anything unless we are attached to the vine. So the moment someone is detached, don't expect them to begin to produce the fruit of the Spirit. It's not possible. But if they are attached, automatically it will happen. It will happen. Because by that cooperation, God will do the work in us. That is why abiding, that's why we commune. That's the reason why we cherish these altar benches. We cherish our altars when we finish praying. Because a lot of us feel that we are inadequate. We are unable that's why the fact we are saved, we still need source. We need something from that vibe. We need nutrients. We need spiritual vitality all the time. We need strength so that we can continue, so that we can bear much fruit. And he said such, uh, you know, he said he will prune. You know, sometimes they feel something's in the way of that fruit. Something's disturbing it. They cut this, cut it, they cut it, change things a little bit. Maybe be hard, but then the farmer knows that, yes, it will make the thing come out a little bit more. It's not the same for us, doesn't he? That's why we just yield. That's why some song says, you know, just yield that and still. Just yield that and still. We just yield that. Sometimes it's so painful, isn't it? It is. Sometimes the kind of things we go through, the kind of insults we get, the kind of that. But if our Savior has gone through, who are we to feel that? Who are we to that think we are better than him? No matter what we go through, we've not gone near anywhere near it. Ours is just to submit. Just say, God, yes, yeah, sometimes we, we, we feel, and we feel that way, there's no doubt. We're all human, aren't we? But if we just say, well, nevertheless, thy will be done. Yeah. And as we say that, we will bring forth more fruit. Yeah. Much fruit. Because that's the multiplying factor. It's our ability to allow him to have his way in our lives that will do that. That's where the dependency on God's word comes in. We are dependent on his word. That's the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Unto God. That's why we, we encourage. We encourage us to study God's word. It said rightly dividing. That's where we don't get spurious doctrines. That's where we are able to discern. If someone comes and tells you rubbish, you will know very straight away. Because you're studying to show yourself approved. You know, a right man rightly dividing God's word. You know, that is what's important. As we do that, we are attaching ourselves to the vine. We are touching ourselves. That's why we're not forsaking the fellowship, the assembling of ourselves together. I mean, we enjoy, those of us in our own little group here, maybe a little group in our Bible study, but we enjoy the Bible study. As we're sharing together, we felt the Holy Spirit mingling among us. Everyone felt a little bit of, you know, even Isaac was, uh, was telling we leaders that we were not spending much time in prayer, which is true. And we pray God to help us. That we, we, because we know that when we get that dose in, we need prayers to cement it. Yeah. We need prayers to say, God, yes, I've heard it, I feel this way, but I need prayer so that it can sink, it can stay there, it can enable me to bear more fruit. Yeah. Because the person producing that fruit is God. Yes. It's God. We are just his workmanship. That's why we need to abide in him. So being prepared for the pruning process is very, very important. We need to avail ourselves of that pruning and say, prune me. And you have your way, Lord. The fruit we bear is not our own fruit. The moment you feel it's your own fruit and you start seeing your bro that's why, you know the Bible says somewhere that we show them, said when you are able to take the moat out of your own eye, then you can see the speck. 
in your brother's eye. What it means, by the time you've done work, extra work on yourself, by the time we do extra work, you'll be able to see the way God sees it. At the moment, you are seeing it the way humans see it. That's why any little thing is a problem. You are condemning, you are complaining, you are doing this, you are doing that. But when you see the way God sees it, you'll be there just praying and crying for that person. Because as someone said, you know, even your enemy, you don't even want your enemy to go to hell. Not to talk of children of God. People that maybe, we may be careless, maybe not there or there. But those who at least for some reason are in church, by God's grace. Um, you know, it was one of the leaders in Africa that said, you want 100% rapture. That's the heart of a true child of God. You really want everyone, everyone. They're unsaved and they we all just need to make heaven. And if you've got such a heart, you will see things the way God sees it. Not the way man sees it. I see things, oftentimes as a human being, I see the human side. But I just pray, God, God, let me see the way you see it. Give me your grace. Help me, Lord. Give me the endurance. Give me whatever it takes. Long suffering. Without that, we can't be glor- God cannot be glorified in our lives. We can't be in that much fruit. But look at the things you face. Maybe your children, maybe the unsaved. Some of us who've got unsaved children, we know what we go through. Is it easy? No. But sometimes we miss fire again. I miss that because sometimes we want to get the glory to ourselves. You know, my son should be this, my daughter should be that. When you should focus on the glory going to God. Maybe God wants to use that time for you to pray more. For you to so say, God, look, it's only you that can do that. And as we do that, God will be glorified. Amen. Because he will reach out to them. He will save them. Amen. It's not our own work. Sometimes we feel, you know, someone is not pulling their way. That's not pulling their way. It's true. It's human to feel that way. And there's nothing wrong to advise and admonish, but be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. If we're not led by the Spirit, you find out that a little bit of self is coming in. And even people, you know, the young believe oftentimes they notice when we've gone out of uh, plumb. When we've gone out of plumb and um, if we're humble and God can help us to get back on track. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Can you imagine that? It's in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. If you got that fruit, it's good. People will see us and they feel good about us. They just feel this is, a good, this is good. There's something. God has worked on this person. That's God's work. We are almost like in God's workshop. Then he's working on us. And as it works on us, the product is what the world says. And they begin to glorify God, which is in heaven. So let's allow God to work on our lives. He said, um, in, um, because lack of fruit means no change. In verse 6 there, he said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Imagine that. Which means the moment, the fact that we're saved and we are bold at the beginning, doesn't mean that we will abode all the way. Because as it continues to do that, maybe for some reason that nutrient is not passing through. Something is not passing through that branch. And it's, it's, it's missing something, the farmer feels, okay, I'm going to try. If he feels that, look, the branch has, is not cooperating. It's not allowing that source. To, you know, that nutrient to come from the vine into him. He's not allowing the Holy Spirit to feed through. At some stage, they said, well, oh no, it's not going to be any fruit anymore. And sometimes, you know, you feel things like this. You know, and they feel, look, what, what, what good is this? They just cut it off. That one should go. Sometimes in that tree, certain things are cut off. That's cut off. Another branch will come. That will cooperate. They'll bear the fruit. So the matter of fact that we're in church, we saved this many years, doesn't guarantee us anything. All that guarantees us is the fruit, not honestly. It's not about being in the apostolic faith. We thank God it's a great organization. We are all indebted to We love it so much. But without bearing fruit, it's useless to us. Because our fathers, people in the faith that we talk about, they bore fruit. That was the distinction. When we see people who knew there's the fruit they bore, let us bear the same, bear the same fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. When we bear that, then we are abiding. And as we abide in, God will be glorified. Yeah. The same God in the time of the apostles. It's the same God in the time of the Wesleys. In the same God in the time of the Luther. This is centuries available. The same God of when this gospel started in 196. He's the same God tomorrow, today. That's what he wants. He's a very present God. When you start thinking, oh, he's one of yesterday. No, mm-mm. focus on yourself. Focus on God. Let him make you. He's looking for that one person that will stand in the gap. That will say, God, make me a showpiece. Just make my life. If it's going to be through suffering, let it be, Lord. 
Let it be, Lord. It may be through persecution from my husband, from my wife, from my kids, whatever. Let it be, Lord. Just make me let that beauty of Jesus Christ shine through me. Yes. Then let me bear that fruit. I mean, I used to say, a woman, I never, I mean, long before I became a Christian, I saw it, I, we saw it. That woman, we literally all through most of her life, useful life, she suffered under a cheating husband. And yet she was faithful. Honestly, she was faithful. She would, she would still smile, do this and do that. Of course, I don't, we don't know how God guided and some things she needed to do. I'm not, I'm not talking about the details. But as far as we saw, we could see a robust Christian. She handled it with the love of Christ. And I'm sure if that man was saved, it would be because she had a faithful husband, wife. That's why the fact that many, many years, this was an unfaithful man. This was someone nothing to do with our church. Nothing, even way, way before I knew anything about Christianity. When I became a Christian eventually, I remember that woman. I rem- this was, her life didn't bring me to Christ at that time. But then I began to say, okay, so this is the, what Christianity does. Many, that is a, that's a life that's been glory. She's gone to glory now, but I can remember. She doesn't even have a clue if I became a Christian or not. That is God. That's what we want to be. May God help us to be so. May God help us. May God give us the grace. You know, the, 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 in, in verse 7, it said, if you abide, not John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Imagine that. He's saying anything. The, the, the moment we satisfy that requirement, where truly, he said, because when you ask anything, you'll be asking according to God's will. He said, you, anything you ask, he said he will answer. It, what else do we want? What kind of blessing can surpass that? He said, he shall ask anything. He said, ye, and it will be done to you. Ye have not, look at the verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. We didn't choose ourselves. Did we choose ourselves? No. But he's chosen us out of his mercy, out of his love. And he has ordained us. And what's that ordination about? Don't think it's just minister the ordained. He's ordained us. Us. Every child of God is ordained in this, sense, in this context. Ordained you. What is the ordination? Is that ye should go and bring forth fruit. So if we don't produce fruit of the Spirit, that ordination is not working on us. He said he has ordained us. To bring forth fruit. Uh, bring forth um, fruit and that your fruit should remain. Amen. He's given us the grace that t- from now till we are raptured. From now till he takes us to glory. He wants that fruit to remain. And part of that fruit is not just the intrinsic fruit of the spirit only. But many people will be attracted. Your neighbors, people will just see something about you that will attract them. And that becomes also fruit. That becomes fruit too. But let's allow God to have his way in our lives. Let's allow God to really have his way. He says, be ye therefore perfect. As your father in heaven is perfect. We're talking about Christian perfection now. As we yield to God. As we allow him to have his way in us. We become. The Christianity seems to be dimming. But if we can only find people that bear fruit. Christianity will never die. By God's it will never die anyway. That's all Christ is looking for. May you and me avail ourselves to him as we invite you to the altar to come and pray. As we sing the closing song on 6-5.
us nearer. Nearer to that wonderful cross, Jesus. We want to bear fruit, oh Lord. We want to be connected to you, Lord. We want to be in tune with you, Jesus. Come and make us whole again. Come and save, oh Lord. Sanctify, holy Jesus. Fill us with your spirit, almighty God. Jesus, revive us again. Oh Lord, draw us nearer. The songwriter says, I am thine, O Lord. Make us yours once again, O Father. Draw us nearer, Jesus, as we look to you in prayer, Father. Come and meet every need and be careful to give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.